We covered functions at a really introductory level earlier, but I want to close out this section by talking about functions a little bit deeper. When do we use parentheses? When do we use spaces? How do you chain multiple functions together? Stuff like that. Uh, so we're going to kind of cover advanced function uh, usage here in Elm. We're going to talk about making local variables, stuff like that. So uh, let's hop right in. Um, I'm going to show you uh, that add function that we had from a few uh, lessons ago. So let add in JavaScript looked like this. So when we wanted to say add 10, 20, uh, we could do that. Um, and then if we wanted to like nest a function call like this, we'll do 30 just for clarity. This is going to say take add and add it with 10 and the result of add 20 and 30. So what we're seeing here is it's going to add these two, we get 50, and then it's going to say take 10, add that to 50, and that's how we end up with 60 here. How do we do that in Elm if we uh, don't use parentheses when we call arguments? Well, let's start by defining our add function just like we had it in the previous sections. Uh, we have add a b equals a plus b. So when I wanted to call it uh, on just two numbers, it was easy. I just said add space 10, space 20, no parentheses, no commas, none of that. How does this work if I want to <laughs> kind of chain these together? So I'm just going to do it the naive way and say, all right, I guess we don't need parentheses. Is this how I do it? No. And uh, I get kind of a crazy message, right? Too many args. Uh, the add function expects two arguments, but it got four instead. Are there commas or missing parentheses? And so we kind of get uh, issues um, uh, when we try to do it this way. So let's, let's take a look at what we typed and why Elm uh, is confused. So when we called add with 10 and 20, we said, I wanna run the add function, uh, but I wanna give it 10 and I wanna give it uh, 20 as its argument. When we did add 10, add 20, 30, we're saying, hey, you get these four individual arguments and add only takes two. So if I try to call add with three numbers, it's gonna be like, you gave me three numbers. You were supposed to give me two, and that's the error that we see. Uh, when we give it a function, it's gonna get even more confused. It's like, what are you, what are you talking about? Because now it's upset that this got the wrong uh, argument. It's like, you gave me a function, not a number. It's gonna get really, really uh, gnarly. So uh, to give you a, just a simple understanding of what's happening is we need to tell Elm that this is a single argument. So when we use parentheses, in Elm, it's not because we're calling a function or because we're, you know, um, we're defining uh, arguments like you see in JavaScript here, where we use parentheses for that kind of thing. Parentheses are like hugs, where we just say, hey, this stuff, just, you know, take it and pass it in as one thing. So we use parentheses in Elm to say this is a single value, kind of closer to math, right? So um, this behaves like we expect, just like if I did one, do two times. The parentheses work the same way here as they do in JavaScript here, saying, hey, do this first, right? So order of operations. What it's doing is it's saying, let's add these together and then multiply the three times the two. That is exactly how parentheses behave in Elm. It's really consistent with doing math. Um, so parentheses are like, do this stuff first and then pass that whole thing in as one argument to add. Uh, I mean, if we wanted to keep chaining stuff together, uh, it's going to get weird. Uh, it's going to get weird no matter what language we use, right? Uh, so if I use JavaScript, I want to add 30 to 40, and then I want to add 20 to 70, and then I would add 90 to 10, I get 100. You can do the exact same thing in Elm, um, but there's an easier way. Um, so I'm going to show you two ways that you can handle this. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to how to use local variables in your functions. Uh, and I'm gonna show you uh, how you can use pipelines, which are awesome, uh, I really love using them. And then at the end, I'm gonna show you uh, some operators that you might see in the wild that I don't really use too much. Um, so let's start with, uh, you know, let's start with doing this crazy operation. So I'm just gonna say var uh, add nums is gonna be a function. And what I can do is I can say, you know, let x equal, add 30 and 40, 
I can say let y equal add 20 with x. And then I can say return add 10 with y. So when I call add nums, that gives me 100. And the way that I've broken these things apart is I've kind of taken those intermediate steps, assigned them to variables, and then I use those variables later on. So this is a very common thing that you might do in JavaScript. And we can do the same thing in Elm. So I can make an add nums function. And the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to use this let keyword. So let, uh, you only have to do, use it once. And then you can say let x equal add 30 and 40. That's going to put the value 70 inside of x. You can say y is going to add 20 and the value of x. And then uh, instead of saying return, I'm going to say, I'm going to define these variables and they're going to be valid in the context of adding 10 and y together. So add nums is 100 all of a sudden. So add nums says there's a local variable x, there's a local variable y, and I can use those uh, to get towards that sum. And the cool thing about local variables is just like here, see how x isn't defined because it's outside of the scope here of add numbers? Same thing in Elm. x is not defined because it was uh, defined within this let block. It's not like a global variable. So as long as you define things inside of the scope of a let expression, you're not gonna have access to that outside in the general, uh, like in the general file you're working in, for example. Um, so here, what I'm gonna do is bring that back on the screen. Let X, life's just harder when you're working in the terminal. I'll tell you what, I <laughs> uh, can't wait till we get to the part where we're uh, actually diving into a, a real file together. All right, so that is one way to do it. Another way to do it, uh, and this is actually proposed for the JavaScript language, is you can use pipelines. So in Elm, a pipeline allows you to, to do a computation and then take the result and pass that in as an argument to another computation. But in order to understand how pipelines work, I wanna first show you what happens when we give an Elm function only some of its arguments, all right? And this is, this is kind of weird. It's kind of cool, it's kind of weird, but it's important to understand Elm programs that you might see out there. So when I call add with 10 and 20, the add function is satisfied, all right? I gave it a 10, I gave it a 20, it's happy. But what happens in JavaScript when I don't pass that second argument? Well, JavaScript just tries its best. It says, you gave me 10, and then I didn't get an argument, but I gotta run the function anyway, right? Because I'm a function, what else am I gonna do? Um, so what it does is it treats it as if you typed this. And so when we have our add function, um, oops, when we have our add function from before, I'm just gonna kind of bring this back in a, in a view here. What it's doing is it's saying B is undefined and then it's doing 10 plus undefined under the hood. And that gives us this weird value, nan, uh, which is a delicious bread. Uh, what we're gonna do in Elm is different. So add, Remember add had these weird, it didn't have commas in this annotation that I told you to ignore. Uh, it has these arrows. What's weird about functions in Elm is they don't crash or do unexpected things when you don't give them all the arguments. What they do is they partially apply those arguments. So if you only give add one number, that's okay. It's not gonna run yet because it doesn't have the second number. It's gonna give you back a function waiting for the second number. So I can uh, say, you know, add to 10 equals add and 10. And add to 10 is a number that if you give it anything, I've just created a new function now that it just works for anything. Now we have, we're building functions out of smaller ones. So uh, what we're doing here is we're saying add to 10 uh, is waiting for a number and it's going to give you back a number. So if I say add 20, I'm just getting a function. I'm not, I'm not running anything because I'm not, the function's not ready to run. It doesn't have all its inputs yet. We can use that to our advantage uh, by using something called a pipeline operator. So I'm gonna show you how it works and then I'm gonna explain what, what it's doing. What we're doing with this pipe is we're saying take 20 and then pass it in as an argument to add 10. So add takes in 10 and then it takes whatever is to the, whatever's passed in through the pipe. So uh, to make this make a little bit more sense, I'm gonna just keep chaining things together. 
So I'm going to say one hundo equals, I'm going to take 20, I'm going to add 10 to 20, and then I'm going to take the result of that, and I'm going to add 20 to that, and then I'm going to take the result of that, and I'm going to add 50 to that. And at the end, I have 100 because it took 20. Here, it added it to 10, so now I've got 30. It took all that 30, and it piped it into add 20. Now we're doing add 20 and 30, we get 50. And then we take that 50 and we pipe that into another add 50. So what we end up having at each step um, is, uh, let's see if I can uh, do this. So here I have 20 is the value. And then I have 10. So at this point, the value is 30. And then when I do this, at this point, it's 30 plus 20, so I get 50. And then at this point, when I add 50, it's doing 50 plus 50, which is going to equal 100. And that's how the whole expression returns 100. So add, this is kind of a weird use case, right? Like if I wanted to add these numbers, I would just do 20 plus 10. You know what I mean? I wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing things this way. Uh, but this is going to become huge when we start working with lists where you can start to do things like this. I'm going to show you something cool and then we're going to understand it in a later section where you can say take one, two, three, four, five, and I want you to map that through add, you know, 10. And what it's going to do is it is going to add 10 to all those numbers and return the new list. And you can do all kinds of cool stuff. You can say, list.filter and you can say, you know, is it odd and that kind of thing. You can make an is odd function um, that says it's odd if the number, you know, if you mod that by two is one and then you can just do this and then it's it's a whole it's a whole thing. Uh, I, I, I did it backwards, but the moral of the story is uh, the pipeline operator is another uh, alternative uh, to uh, using local variables. So some people uh, will um, uh, implement things like this, add nums, um, let. So this is how we did it before. I probably should have just scrolled, but you know, I've got too much pride. Uh, and then we'll do in add uh, 20 to 10 to y. So this is using let expressions. We can also say, uh, take add 30, 40, pipe that into add 20, pipe that into add 10. Those are both going to give us the same result. So take kind of a screenshot either in real life or with your mind of this code. They are equivalent, all right? So whichever style you prefer, uh, you'll find uh, in practice, you're going to use a mix of these two things. Uh, for this kind of problem, I kind of recommend doing this, uh, but I do want to show you that pipeline operator. Uh, and then there are some other operators that I don't use too much. There's the backwards pipe, which does everything I just said, but backwards. So like add 10 pipe, add 20 backwards pipe, add 30, 40. That also gets you 100. It just prevents the need for parentheses. Uh, and then there's uh, really weird ones where you can um, kind of combine functions and then give that single thing an argument. I don't use these either. So these ones that I'm showing you, they're not going to be in this course, uh, but just uh, keep an eye out. If you go to the Elm core package docs, uh, you're going to see them and you can, you can play around with these and read them. Uh, but I don't, I don't use these functions personally uh, because they confuse me. Uh, <laughs> I think they make, make them a little bit harder to read. Uh, so that's my personal take. Anyway, that was a, a long wind up. You learned about let, you learned about pipelines uh, and you learned about these scary boys. Um, and I'm going to catch you in the next unit. Uh, when we start to dive into modules and types. See you there.